All right, so second half of this lesson, we are now taking our geometric sequences. We are finding the sum of those, also known as the geometric series. Uh, quick review of the explicit formula for a geometric sequence. Um, let's say we have the first term a sub 1, and we know the common ratio that's continually being multiplied to get from term to term is r. Then the nth term a sub n can be found with the formula a sub 1 times r to the power of n minus 1. All right, we're only um, multiplying that initial term by a power of r that's one less than the term we're actually trying to find. Okay, So jump ahead now to the geometric series. We're going to let a sub n be our geometric sequence with that first term a sub 1 common ratio r. Then the sum, S sub n, of the first n terms of that sequence could be found by adding all of them up, right? A sub 1 plus A sub 1 r plus A sub 1 r squared all the way up to the nth term, which is just given by that explicit formula, A sub 1 times r to the power of n minus 1. Um, we also have it written in summation notation there. And then notice we have a formula at the end that we can use to find the value of this sum. It is this formula right here. So we need to take a sub 1, multiply that by 1 minus our common ratio r to the power of n divided by 1 minus r. You're going to see it written like that sometimes. Other times you might see it like this, where we bring the a sub 1 up top. And then other times you might see that distributed in to the parentheses. This is how delta math represents that formula. Okay. All right, so just like the formula for a arithmetic series, we have to take a sub 1 and n loosely here. a sub 1 typically means the first term of the sequence, right? But here it means the first term that's being added, and then n is going to represent the number of terms being added, just again like it was for the arithmetic <coughs> series. All right, now let me give you a proof of this formula. All right, it's going to start by using the top um, expanded summation up there, okay? So S sub N equals our first term added with our second term, A sub 1 R added with our third term, A sub 1 R squared, all the way up to our last term represented by a sub 1 times r to the power of n minus 1. All right, now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply both sides of that equation by r. I mean, it's an equation. I can do whatever operation I want to eat, uh, both sides, right? And it'll still maintain the balance. So our, our trick here is multiply by r. That's going to make the left side become r times s sub n. And then on the right side, every single one of those terms would be multiplied by r. So the a sub 1 turns into a sub 1 r. a sub 1 r turns into a sub 1 r squared. And that pattern would continue until you get to the last term. If I take a sub 1 times r to the power of n minus 1, I multiply that by r, I'm going to get a sub 1 r to the power of n. Okay, so some, sometimes we have trouble understanding that last term. If I did r times a sub 1 times r to the power of n minus 1, that's the same as a sub 1 times r to the power of 1 plus n minus 1, right? We can add the exponents of this r to the first and r to the power of n minus 1. And notice what happens is 
the ones cancel out and you're only left with a power of n then. So that's how this this term right here is found. Okay. Now I'm going to kind of treat those two lines there like a system of equations and I'm going to subtract the left side will simply become s sub n minus r times s sub n. And then on the right side, notice we've got some common terms that can cancel out. These are going to cancel out. These are going to cancel out. And all the other terms in the middle that are being added will cancel all the way up to a sub 1 times r to the power of n minus 1. Okay, so really what's left is in the top line you are left with a sub 1 and on the bottom line you're left with a sub 1 r to the power of n so that's being subtracted. And now we're going to factor both sides. On the left side I'm going to pull out an s sub n. On the right side, I'm going to pull out an a sub 1. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 1 minus r. And I have my formula. All right, so there's your proof. Now we can see why that works, that formula works. Any questions on that? All right, so example four, find the sum of the first 15 terms of one half to the power of n. So uh, the hope would be you'd be able to look at that and, and recognize that that explicit formula is representing a geometric sequence right, because it's exponential in nature. Um, but reason out the first couple terms. Uh, the first term would be 1 half. The second term would be 1 half squared, which is 1 fourth. Third term would be 1 half cubed, or 1 eighth, and so forth. All right, so to go from 1 half to 1 fourth, from 1 fourth to 1 eighth, we're multiplying by 1 half here, right? So I'm going to say a sub 1 is 1 half, but then also r is 1 half here. This is geometric. Okay, so then the sum of the first 15 terms would be represented by s sub 15. And that would equal the first term of 1 half multiplied by 1 minus the common ratio of 1 half raised to the power of 15 all over 1 minus 1 half. All right, and then to simplify this, all I'm going to do is uh, multiply my numerators together, multiply my denominators together. So the numerator is not going to change. This is just simply going to become 1 minus 1 half to the 15th. Denominator, 1 times 2 is 2. 1 half times 2 is 1. So this is simply going to become 1 minus 1 half to the 15th. All right, now let's get a fraction value for that. All right, so that is three, uh, 32,000. 767 over 32,768, really close to 1. Here's that value as a decimal. 
So let's approximate it. 0 0.99997. Questions on that example? All right, how about the sum S sub N of the first N terms of one third to the power of N? So here, if we don't have a value for N, all we're going to be able to do is come up with a formula specific to this geometric uh, series, all right? So notice the, the makeup of that formula is pretty similar to the one before. I can say a sub 1 here is 1 third. And I can say r is also 1 third. Okay. Now notice in both cases, the r value 1 third, that's the base of the exponential function given by the explicit formula we are provided with, right? All right, so the sum of the first n terms, s sub n, that's going to equal one-third times one minus one-third to the power of n all over one minus one-third. And then I can do the same thing I did with the last problem to simplify here. I can distribute the one to the numerator and the three to the denominator. And this will yield one minus one-third to the power of n over three minus one or one minus one-third to the power of n divided by two. And there's a nice formula to represent the sum of the first n terms for this geometric series. You could use it now to find you know, let's say I want the sum of the first 100 terms. Simply plug a 100 in for n, simplify. Okay. All right, let me give you, let's add in one more example here. Uh, let's say ask us to evaluate the sum from k equals 1, actually let's change it, let's go k equals 3 to 10 of 3 times 2 to the power of k. Thank you. Alright, so notice the explicit formula there, that's exponential in nature, that's our our tip off that this is a geometric sequence that we're working with here. All right, so how many numbers are being added if we're adding the third through the tenth? Eight, good. So we'll say n equals eight then. What's the first term being added? Careful. The actual value of it. And how did you get that? So you plug the 3 in 4K, right? So basically you're finding the third term of the associated sequence, right? That's actually the first term being added here. So that's 3 times 8 or 24. And then what is R? What was that? 2, the base of the exponential function. Okay, so that's everything that needs identified to calculate this sum. It's going to equal that first term being added, 24, times 1 minus our 
R value of 2 raised to the eighth power over 1 minus 2. All right, so let's go 1 minus 2 to the eighth power, negative 255. Obviously, if we divide that by negative 1, that becomes positive 255. And then multiply that by 24. We're getting our final sum, 6,120.